What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. We're going to be talking about weapons in this video here today. So weapons is the next feature film that's supposed to be coming from Zach Kreger, who we know gave us Barbarian a couple years ago. And this film of his name, Weapons, I think it's supposed to be dropping in 2026. So we still have a long way to go uh, in terms of where we are now to 2026. But I want to go over some rumored plot details, kind of share some things I've heard, which again are just rumored, not confirmed, and I will say alleged, and just share my thoughts on what I've heard about this film, which apparently is quite good. So I want to go over this article that World of Real published a few months ago, and I'll share my thoughts on this article too, just to kind of give everybody a peace of mind when it comes to this article. So it says last spring, Weapons was all the buzz in Hollywood. Warner Brothers and New Line won a bidding war that involved multiple other studios and snatched up the rights for an eight-figure sum. With this next one, Kreger could turn into a significant name in the horror genre in the same vein as Peel, Aster, and Eggers. We'll see. There's a lot riding on this next film, which again is titled Weapons. It says we don't know much about Weapons, just that it would be told via multi and interrelated storylines. Paul Thomas Anderson's Magnolia was reportedly a major influence. I can now see why. Uh, it goes on to say that the gist of the plot has to do with children disappearing in a small town. They all wake up in the middle of the night and walk out of their homes not to be seen again. Everyone is bewildered and the rest of the film tells a story from the perspectives of multiple characters, teacher, detective, family. Of course, there are also supernatural elements involved in the script, including witchcraft, but the plot is just, a much, just as much about the inhabitants and their background stories as it is about the missing children. It's quite the ambitious undertaking, and if Kreger nails it on film, then it could turn into something special for movie audiences. Now, I will say that everything I've read so far is true, only because not only has this information been reported on via people who managed to get their hands on the script back in 2023 but from everyone else who has been coming out mirroring the same things this movie does indeed have to do with children who are missing witchcraft it's very much so in the vein of magnolia and for my gen z crowd out there maybe this one might make you a little bit more familiar with how the story goes have you ever seen hoodwinked <laughs> okay so it's like Hoodwinked, the movie that came out in 2005 and it's told from all these different people's perspectives. That's what Weapons is like. Now, I want to go over who's playing who in the film. You have Alden Ehren Ehrenreich, who is playing Paul, a cop. Austin Abrams, who's playing James. You have Julia Garner, who's playing Justine, a school teacher. Josh Brolin, who's playing Arthur. Carrie Christopher, who plays Alex. Amy Madigan, who plays Gladys. And then there's two secret cast members that I will not reveal, but you have seen them in many projects throughout your childhood. That's all I will say, just to broaden it a bit to make it a little bit hard to guess. So from what I've heard about weapons, again, the movie is quite good. The third act, from what I've heard, is absolutely insane. It's quite a crowd pleasing film. And there are several moments in the film in which people might just want to stand up and clap. Just from everything I keep hearing about weapons, I myself am a little bit perplexed by what is so crowd pleasing about it, but it seems to be a hit. And I'm like, wow, what is going on with this movie? Because to me, it just seems like your standard, well-written, nothing too new quality horror comedy movie. But something about how, again, that's why I stress execution is everything. Maybe when I see it, I'll understand. I just cannot see why people are going so crazy about this. I can't understand the bidding war, but it makes me all that more excited because knowing the full context of the story and what's going on, what is happening, what's going on with the kids and this witchcraft. I just want to see how it's all executed on screen to see if I can now get behind the hype because everybody who keeps seeing it or who has seen it they are eating this movie up um i don't think it's going to be better than barbarian there are elements of it that i do not prefer over barbarian and if i were to compare it to something i would honestly say it seems or from what i have heard it sounds like this movie is long legs on steroids so it might excite some people it might not if you were a fan of long legs then it'll excite you if you weren't a fan obviously it won't now 
Julia, Julia Garner's character, who was the teacher named Justine, she walks into her classroom one day and she's supposed to have like 17 or 18 students, I believe. But there's only one student named Alex present. Her other kids have gone missing. They all got up in the middle of the night at the same time and have just gone missing. So the movie just plays out from there. The town thinks she's responsible for it and we just slowly peel back the layers on what's going on, where did the kids go, and when you find out what, where they went, what happened to them, the, that's where the third act goes insane. It's gonna have some of the most outlandish sequences on screen, depending on how it's cut. Because how it's been described to me, it sounds like this is gonna make people want to just squirm in their chair while also laughing. I've heard this movie is quite hilarious. So it, it sounds like the humor carries it more than the horror, but when it wants to be scary, the horror hits. So Zach, Zach Kreger might have another hit on his hand, something that people prefer over Barbarian. I myself right now cannot see myself preferring this film over Barbarian. There are some elements again to it that I just do not prefer over what he gave us with Barbarian. But the two secret cast members, I would love to know who you guys think they are down in the comment section below. What do you think about these rumored plot details when it comes to weapons? Are you into it? Are you not into it? And like I again stress, it is very much so like long legs but on steroids or on crack if you will and one more thing before i go it would appear that the adults featured in the film uh since it seemed like they were going to carry the story outside of these missing kids they are all made to be quite likable for the most part it sounds like i am more intrigued to see how that goes since a lot of their sequences seem like they're just being interrogated so we'll see how they make us root for these adults the only thing we have to immediately connect with is, well, if you're a, a person of sound mind and reason, missing children would get anyone up in arms. So it sounds like the movie kind of leans on the anxiety of the kids missing to build up this atmosphere for you to be scared. But I've heard again that it, it more so relies on the comedic aspects of it all. But there are some very scary, intense moments when it wants to be scary. Also, since I forgot to mention him, but Benedict Wong, who was also in the film, stars as the school principal. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you go ahead and subscribe, turn on post notifications so that you never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links to all my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there are any movies, news, or reviews you like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.